Thanks, Goose. Massively multiplayer online role-playing games take a very long time to develop and are very expensive to make, but if successful, they can generate a lot of ongoing revenue. For example, it's been reported that Star Wars The Old Republic made $139 million last year on microtransactions alone. And World of Warcraft, which is now nine years old, made $213 million on micros, not even counting subscription fees. For many years now, gamers have been wondering what the next World of Warcraft will be, and no game has really come close. And that's why newcomer Wildstar is so very interesting. Strange to think that we might just finally get a new home. I wouldn't exactly call myself personable, but I feel like if we all just stick together, we might just be okay. Smash, Guardian, smash. Challenge begin. Wildstar is a sci-fi MMO currently in beta and due for release soon. And the hard part about this beta review is much of what is really exciting about this game is many, many levels from where I could get to in a couple of beta weekends. So do keep that in mind. Wildstar is made by Carbine Studios, who formed in 2005 with 17 original members from Blizzard. And you immediately feel that in the game's art style and design. It's eerie stepping into Wildstar. Almost as if I'd stepped into some futuristic World of Warcraft instance. It can really be hard to let go sometimes. I think what Carbine are trying to aim for is the MMO holy grail. They don't want to emulate WoW, they want to make WoW 2.0 and they're throwing very big guns at it. There are two factions, six classes and eight races. Having six unique classes is a pretty big undertaking for a new MMO on day one, especially when it's got such a PvP focus. On top of each class, you have a secondary path, and this is another layer of customization. It aims to satiate those who like to maybe explore more, or socialize more, or just kill and grind stuff a lot. I experimented mostly with the explorer path, which, as you can imagine, has lots of exploring, and I love that you've got a double jump. Why have a single jump when you can have a double? There's a definite Guild Wars 2 feel to the movement, which is fantastic. The bigger picture of all these layers of customization is that they're trying to make this game a more personal experience, more tailored to you, and more you. From cosmetic appearances, to your mount, to a fairly daunting perk and ability system. They want you to have plenty of your own identity in how you play. And there's just so many abilities to buy and so much to customize. So many quests filling up your log at all times. It's a never-ending to-do list. I need to clear that quest log. I need to do all those quests. I need to be gone, but I know I'll never do it. And leveling up in Wildstar is literally rock and roll. Whoa, look at you! Wow. Time to crack some skulls! This is definitely a click through and collect MMO so far. It feels unashamedly all about grinding up to the end game. That word grind has such a negative association when it comes to MMOs, but it's not necessarily a bad thing as long as the grind is fun. And so far, the action and quests have been pretty good. Part of that is because of the reactive combat. Abilities hit hard and the action is instantly exciting and accessible. I quite like the creature design too. <laughs> oh, sorry, little guy. But what Wildstar does better than the rest is the telegraphing. Oh my. This is the incoming danger lines that appear on the ground in fights. They're a huge part of all the combat and they're just done beautifully. And so varied. <laughs> telegraphing in MMOs is becoming more and more common because it works so well in structured group fights and it's a way to have lots of positional attacks while dancing around thousands of people's potentially laggy MMO connections all at once. I'm surprised we don't see it in more games. Some may say that telegraphing is easy mo, but I don't think so. I think it works for this kind of game with this reticule aimed combat. And besides, does this look easy to you? I dabbled mostly with three of the classes. The Engineer, who can mech it up and blast enemies to bits. The Warrior, who does an exciting dance of blades and flurries. And the Stalker, who's all about the backstabs. It's so nice to play a class that can go into permanent stealth again. I feel like with recent MMOs, that's been put in the too hard basket. And in fairness, it is very hard to have a class that can walk by most enemies in the game completely invisible. Personally, it's the PvP that I'm excited the most about, taking my ability set and gear and facing off against other players in the world. That's right, 
proper PvP. In the world, world PvP. This isn't some structured zone where everyone gets to roam around and fight each other if they want to. No, 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 you're gonna get ganked. Finally, it's been so long. I truly believe it's the threat of other players that elevates an MMO from being a cardboard cutout quest-a-thon to something far more interesting. And yes, we all remember being ganked and having a horrible time in Stranglethorn Vale in World of Warcraft, but that's the point, you remember it. On top of that, there's balanced team-based PvP, structured 80-player battles with customizable buildings. Oh, if they pull it off, I'll be in competitive keyboard bashing heaven. I'm also very curious to see how the telegraphing focus in the combat will work with other humans involved. The developers have talked a lot about their end game, which is usually lacking in most MMOs. They want the end of this game to really be the beginning of it, whether you play solo or if you're into very tough 40-person raids. Personally, I'm not sure if I'm ready for 40-person raids again. I have all these memories of sitting down for seven hours with no toilet breaks fighting the same boss over and over. Maybe seven years ago, but today, there's so many other distractions and games and MMOs. But they certainly do look impressive, so I'm curious. And they want to focus on all of the classes having something to do all of the time, instead of just healers spamming one button for eight hours, for example. There's lots I haven't gone into, and we will go deeper come review, such as owning your own house and customizable hoverboards. But there are some concerns as well, and I think the biggest is the cartoony art style. I'm sure many players won't be able to get past that, the Exile starting area is particularly oversaturated with green, and to be honest, it was quite horrible to quest in. It did get better past level 7, though. The starting area of the other faction, the Dominion, was much better from the get-go. I also like their starting quests more, too, which encapsulate their evil regime. Yes, I detect potential in this one. Also, the game's quest tracking is a bit confusing, especially in the game's tutorial area, of all places. Things feel a little cluttered on screen too, and I found it quite hard to see my friends without putting ugly markers on their heads. But that just might be the getting used to it stage of an MMO. Right now I've only seen a small portion of this world, and I am very curious about the game, but I'm not completely sold yet, especially with that subscription fee model, which is always a downer. Most of all though, I'm just afraid of liking it too much and getting lost down that MMO rabbit hole once more. <laughs>